welcome to royals who rocked the world from Henry VIII to Harry. And if you look at the pictures of those two, you can see the resemblance, the fair skin, the red hair, the blood of the Tudors runs through the Windsors. Why is it that Americans are so fascinated by the royal family? It's a Cinderella story. Who else gets to ride around in a golden coach? And nobody does pageantry like the Brits. It also reminds us of what we as Americans lost when we won our independence. And then there's a little bit of schadenfreude. Schadenfreude is the pleasure that we feel at someone else's misfortune. And you have to admit, when you look at the royal family and all of the squabbles, it makes us look good parents compared to what's going on there. The president once said, Americans prefer the royal family to their own politicians. And I have no doubt that that is true. And there's the Obamas meeting little Prince George in his cute little bathrobe when he was about three. Martin Chateris, the Queen's favorite private secretary, once said that one of the functions of the royal family is to be the continuing story of Peyton Place. And I just love that, that, that this you know, upper crust Brit is comparing the family to Peyton Place, the American novel about a New England town with secrets. And the secretary also went on to say that in the royal family, someone is always behaving badly. And no one was behaving worse than Henry VIII, the Tudors. And I don't know if you ever had an opportunity to see this show. It was just fantastic. But I'm going to warn you, X-rated. I couldn't even show it to my students when I was teaching ninth grade. So here you have the star, his name was Jonathan Reese Myers, and he had written into his contract that he would not get old or fat, so he was not a very historical looking Henry, but the show is still worth watching. And of course, we all know the story of Henry VIII and his six wives, but very briefly, I'm just going to remind you. Wife number one, was the Spanish princess Catherine of Aragon. And Catherine was the daughter of Isabella and Ferdinand. You know, that's the couple that gave Columbus the money for the ships to sail across the ocean. She came to England and married Arthur, Henry's older brother. Arthur died after about 10 months of marriage and Catherine swore the marriage had never been consummated. She remained in England. She and Henry fell in love. They wanted to get married. Henry wrote the Pope and got a dispensation to marry his brother's wife. They were married 25 years. This is not a shot in the dark marriage. In 25 years, they had one daughter who lived to adulthood, Mary, and a series of still born children. Well, Henry began to think, hmm, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to marry my brother's wife after all. And in the meantime, desperate for an heir, his eyes fall upon young Anne Boleyn. And he and Anne begin a passionate love affair, and she's holding back her sexual favors and holding back. She wants Henry to get that divorce, the Pope is not willing. The Pope already granted him one dispensation. He's not going to grant him another one. So finally, Anne gives in and whispers one day in Henry's ear, Henry, I'm pregnant. Now Henry is just mad to get himself divorced. He has had it with the Pope. He breaks off from the church, the Roman church. He declares himself head of the Church of England divorces himself and marries Anne. And he says to Minister Cromwell, don't worry, Cromwell, this marriage won't end in divorce. And of course, it did not end in divorce. 
1,000 days after being married, Anne Boleyn goes to the chopping block. There's a clip from the movie, it's a wonderful movie, End of a Thousand Days, starring Richard Burton and jean via Bougeau. He has no male children from Anne. She gives him one daughter, Elizabeth, and not the son he needs. Now he begins to think, oh, I think I was bewitched. I probably never should have divorced Catherine in the first place. Trumps up charges of adultery and incest with her brother against Anne and is off with Anne's head. If only Anne had read this issue of Cosmopolitan Magazine. Sons, do you have what it takes to make them? Or marrying a man with issues? Should you worry? So if you grew up in the UK, you learned the order of Henry VIII's wives by knowing this little rhyme. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. So the first divorce, of course, is Catherine of Aragon. The first beheading is Anne Boleyn. And then we have Henry marrying the love of his life, Jane Seymour, who gave him what he wanted more than anything else in the world, a son. However, two weeks after giving birth, she dies, and they are buried together on the grounds of Windsor Castle. Wife number four is a political marriage. That is the German princess, Anne Boleyn, He's going to marry, I'm sorry, Anne of Cleves. He's going to marry Anne. He's going to make all kinds of treaties with Germany. He's never met Anne. Anne of Cleves comes to England. He takes one look at her and says, she is as ugly as my horse. I'm not marrying her. And his minister says, well, sire, you have to marry her. We'll go to war with Germany if you don't. So he says, okay, but I'm not consummating the marriage. He marries her, he divorces her the next day. She remains in England and becomes one of the wealthiest women in England and one of Henry's closest friends. So now Henry's in his 50s, he's obese, he has running sores on his legs and his eyes fall upon 18 year old Catherine Howard. He marries her and she very, very stupidly begins a series of affairs. Well, when you cheat on the king, you're committing treason. The second beheading. And finally, wife number six, he gets lucky. He dies and she survives. So now we are going to jump ahead about 400 years in English history, and we are going to look at Queen Victoria and her family. And there's Queen Victoria under the green arrow, and there's Albert, and there are their nine children. They are famous for having had a very passionate relationship. She was a big diary keeper. She kept diary entries every day of her life. And after her wedding night, she wrote, never, ever had I spent such a night. And they just had a glorious sex life with nine children to prove it. 